It hasn't even been a year since the full version of DaVinci Resolve 20 was released and version 20.2 has already been launched recently. While we were still trying to get used to the features that came with version 20, Blackmagic Design kept surprising us with a series of incredible new features. I think it's fantastic that they have offered us such a high level of brand new features in such a short period of time. While some big companies spend a whole year rebranding with fewer updates, Blackmagic introduces us to an almost entirely new experience every couple of months. So on behalf of everyone, I really want to thank them for that. So instead of making a new video for every single update, I wanted to showcase multiple updates in one video. In this video, we are going to take a look at the new features that have been added to the color page, covering all the updates from version 20 full version to the present day. This way, we will get a little refresher on the previous editions, while also seeing what's new in the latest version. First, let's quickly recap what came with the full version of DaVinci Resolve 20. I want to first take a look at the Chroma Color Warper tool, which was introduced in the 20.0 update. While the old spider web style is still available, this update introduced a new mesh-based tool view. It operates on a special color grid, where the visual distance between colors directly corresponds to our perception of color differences. It has two different modes of operation, at stroke normal mode, and point-to-point -point mode. In normal mode, when you select a color and drag it toward the area you want to change, it affects all the colors within that range. You can also control the size of the affected area with the chroma range setting. Of course, it shouldn't be used like I'm showing you right now. I'm exaggerating a bit to demonstrate its effect. In point-to-point -point mode, we can change the selected color without affecting a range. This means we can directly map a specific color to a different hue or color. But in my opinion, the best feature and the intended way to use this tool is its ability to work directly in the viewer. This means you can click on the area you want to change with the mouse and without letting go, move it left, right or up and down to make color adjustments without severely degrading the image. As a result, it has become a very useful tool for secondary grading. I've also been slowly integrating the Chroma Warp tool into my own workflow. All right, the next feature is the AI Magic Mask. This isn't a new feature, but its workflow has been slightly modified and it's now referred to as AI Magic Mask version 2. Selections are no longer separated into categories like person and object. Instead, we now have tools to add and remove points. Additionally, two new brush features called Add or Subtract Paint Stroke have been added to the help refine our selection. The process is very simple. You just place points on the area or person you want to select. And after adding just two or three points, the software already understands what you are trying to select. If a part is selected that you don't want, you can also remove it using the Paint Stroke mode. Once the selection is made, you track it and then you can apply any changes you want. The current Magic Mask tool is genuinely the best masking tool I have ever seen in any editing program. If you know of a better one, please mention them in the comments. But in my opinion, its current state is really incredible. All right, next we have Depth Map Effect on the list. Although the Depth Map Effect might not seem to have changed, it has been reworked and since the 20.0 update, it produces much more detailed and impressive results. As you can see in this example, you can select the area you want to affect with much greater detail. Coupled with AI support, it has become a very useful tool. I also have a more detailed video about the depth map effect. If you are interested, you can check it out as well. Finally, the full version of DaVinci Resolve 20 introduced a new optimized user interface layout option for vertical videos. So now if your timeline is vertical, the color page now automatically rearranges itself to provide you with the best possible workflow. There are many other minor updates, of course, but you can find those on the Blackmagic's website. These were the most outstanding features for me that came with the version 20. Now let's continue with the 20.1 upgrade. Let's start with the one of the general features. The effect search shortcut from the Fusion page has now been added to all other pages. On the Fusion page, we could press Ctrl spacebar or shift spacebar on Mac to quickly search for and add any effects you want. Now this feature is also available on the color page as well. With Ctrl spacebar, we can search for any effect and add it to the selected node. You can also assign a shortcut key from the keyboard customization menu. There are also some changes in the viewer on the color page. The color viewer's safe area display selection has been improved. Additionally, the ability to change the timeline resolution 
just like on the edit page, has been added here. With the 20.1 update, many of the innovations on the color page were focused on the effects rather than entirely new tools. The first one of these is the split tone effects. Normally, this effect was located within the film look creator. They have separated it from there and turned it into a more detailed standalone effect. It has two new modes, natural and strong. While natural mode uses somewhat similar color tones, strong mode applies contrasting tones to the image. And I think their intensity has also been increased a bit. These modes have also been added to the film look creator. However, the new split tone effect also includes a third option, custom. If you're not familiar with split toning, it allows us to apply different color tones to the shadows and highlights. With this custom option, you can affect the shadow and highlight areas just as you like. With the preview of influence, you can see exactly which area you are affecting. And a protect neutrals option has also been included, which helps prevent the midtones from being too affected by the changes. Our next effect is one of my favorites, the color tone diffuser. Color tone diffuser is a new resolve effect designed to emulate the look and behavior of a physical diffusion filter placed in front of a camera lens. Unlike a standard blur or glow effect, it recreates how light interacts with a real glass filter that has subtle scattering properties and colored light reflections. Okay, let's take a quick look. The diffusion selection controls how much light spreads across the image. The effects soft clipping option for shadows and highlights help preserve details by preventing excessive bloom or washed out blacks. The tone light section adds colored light scattering where the intensity and color bias of the tint can be adjusted to introduce warm, cool or stylized tones. The fall off section allows you to shape the effect's spatial distribution across the frame, often emulating how a real filter's diffusion might appear strong in the center and fade toward the edges. Together, these controls let you achieve both subtle filmic diffusion or more expressive colored glow looks. There are also built-in presets such as Teal Soft or the Neutral Clean Slate. Then you can adjust the diffusion and tone parameters to match the scenes, lighting and emotional intent. For advanced workflows, the effect includes color space and gamma overrides and a 3D LUT compatible mode that disables non-LUT safe controls when baking the effects into LUTs. This is a really versatile tool and maybe I will even make a separate tutorial about it in the upcoming weeks. Okay, improvements have also been made to some existing effects. Both the light rays and glow effects receive significant updates that expand their creative control and realism. These tools now feature atmosphere controls. Light rays also gain the ability to modulate color channels independently, while Glow introduced a secondary glow layer for more complex light behaviors. The new atmosphere controls simulate how light interacts with haze or air particles, allowing rays and glows to feel more volumetric and integrated within the scene rather than appearing as simple overlays. It was already possible to achieve a clean digital result with older versions, but with the atmosphere feature in particular, these effects have taken realism to the next level. Finally, an improvement has been implemented in the face refinement effect. Previously, after adjusting skin texture, skin tones could sometimes take on a plastic-like appearance. To counteract that, a feature has been added that allows you to add grain to the skin tone regions. This way, after adjusting skin tones, it's possible to achieve a more natural look by adding grain. Okay. Blackmagic Design isn't stopping there and continues to deliver high-end improvements. After a few minor developments, they released version 20.2 about a month ago. And to no one's surprise, they've come through with another excellent upgrade. First, I want to talk about the arrival of the long-awaited Apple ProRes RAW format. Yes, Resolve finally supports Apple ProRes RAW. From what I understand, this wasn't possible until now due to some legal issues, but it seems those have finally been resolved. In addition to improving the Blackmagic Camera app, they also released a new product called the Camera Product. This device is designed to consolidate all the connections you might need into a single point. With the release of the iPhone 17, filming with a phone has been taken to a whole new level. And with Apple ProRes RAW now supported in Resolve, the entire workflow is now complete. Let's move on with the color page updates. One of the new features on the color page is go to clip number. You can access it from the menu bar by selecting playback, go to and clip number. This allows you to type in the number of the clip you want to go to below the viewer. 
This is a great time-saving feature for timelines with thousands of clips. Finally, one of the most prominent features that came to the color page with 20.2 is the cinematic haze effect. This effect is a new AI-powered Resolve FX tool designed to simulate a realistic atmospheric haze and fog directly in post-production. Again, unlike a simple overlay, it uses an automatically generated depth map to analyze scene geometry and apply haze selectively based on the distance, denser in the background and lighter in the foreground. This depth-aware behavior allows the haze to feel naturally embedded within the image, and it creates a convincing sense of depth and scale. After adding it to a node, the first step is to refine the near and far depth sliders to define where the haze begins and how it fades into the distance. Once the depth balance feels natural, adjust the intensity slider to control the strength of the haze and fine-tune the halation to let bright areas bloom softly through the fog. Additional parameters like air disturbance can be used to introduce subtle texture or motion for more realism. Alright guys, of course, as I mentioned before, there are minor improvements in all these updates that I haven't mentioned or included in this video. But I think we have reviewed the best ones, even if it was a quick overview. While the features or tools I've talked about in this video are amazing on their own, the really important thing is to be able to integrate them into a proper workflow. That's why I recommend you to try different tools together using various types of footage. I believe you will discover the true power of Resolve by using many of its tools in combination. If there are any effects or tools you would like to see in more detail, please let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care.